But check out this interesting clip uh, that might come from a, a surprising source as to some of the Jewish foundations of the land of Israel. Check this out. Many Muslims around the world who are named after Jewish prophets without making the connection. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's so hilarious that, that you have a Muslim named Dawood and then he says, Jerusalem is the capital of Palestine. But he is named after the king who proclaimed Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Right. So you see this, this contradiction? You see, you see Hamas, by the way, you see Hamas logo for this battle that they call the battle of Al-Aqsa, Al-Aqsa flood. You see them quoting the Quran, the verse, ادخلوا عليهم الباب. This verse was, the Quran was praising two people for saying this. You know who are the two people? The spies of Israel, Joshua and Caleb. Wow. So Hamas is quoting Joshua and Caleb for doing this. You, you have a terrorist organization in Egypt, Sinai. It's called Ansar Bayt al-Maqdis. Ansar in Arabic is the allies. They are called the allies of Bayt al-Maqdis. Muslims are repeating the word Bayt al-Maqdis without knowing that it comes from the Hebrew word Bayt HaMikdash. So these terrorists should be friends with Israel. They are called the allies of Beit HaMikdash, the allies of the Jewish temple. Wow. So you should uh, make amends with Israel and, and, and recognize its, its existence. Wow. Education is the... You see this wowing? I was saying this wowing when I was in Paris when Rachel was, was telling me this. Yeah. I was saying, no, 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 Beit HaMikdash is an Arabic word. She told me, Luay, I'm sorry. Beit HaMikdash comes from Beit HaMikdash. <laughs> so you got it guys first? We got it first. Right. <laughs> we got it first. There you have it. I mean... That's, there, there are so many different uh, arguments and approaches as to the Jewish claim to the land of Israel. Some people take the historic proof that the historic claim, some people go the direction of international law, but ultimately it stems from this being the land that God promised the Jewish people multiple times in the Bible. It's the place that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for all of his descendants forever. It's the reason why in Daniel chapter 6, verse 11, Daniel, who's outside of Jerusalem, is facing towards Jerusalem because Jerusalem is the spiritual epicenter of all of the universe. It is the place in which God chose to reveal himself in the spot of the Holy Temple, and that is the epicenter, that is the core of all spiritual existence resides in that spot. And that's why, by the way, besides from Daniel uh, facing Jerusalem, that's why Jews throughout history, ever since they were kicked out of the land of Israel, wherever they found themselves, when it came time to pray, the Jewish people would always face where? Face Jerusalem. If you were in South Africa, you would face north. If you were in America, you faced east. If you're in China, you'd face west. Wherever you were in the world, you face Jerusalem, you face Israel, because Jerusalem is the epicenter of where heaven and earth meet. That is, it is a spiritual, it is a spiritual place, and it's a spiritual promise that was promised to the Jewish people. It's why all of our formal prayers that we recite three times a day throughout all of our history all include a longing to be regathered together and back to Jerusalem. It's why the Grace After Meals mentions Jerusalem. It's why every wedding celebration concludes with the breaking of a glass. Why? Because even at the height of all of your joy, the happiest day of your life, the day that you found your spouse, we remember the destruction of Jerusalem. And we, we await the imminent building of Jerusalem with Mashiach, with the Messianic, uh, in the Messianic times. Uh, it's why when a person is comforted, after after losing a loved one, the, the language that's used is, may God comfort you among the mourners of who? The mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. The epicenter of everything is Jerusalem, is, is a yearning to be back in the land of Israel, doing the commandments that God has instructed us to do. And ultimately, our hope for the future is that Mashiach is going to come. And then when Mashiach comes, all the Exiled people will gather together in Jerusalem and the world will be a place of peace. It won't be something that's conquered. It's not something that all of the non-believers will be held bound. It'll be a, an awakening of consciousness where the entire world serves God uh, in one accord. And that's, that's what we all hope for. That is our connection to the land of Israel. Uh, nothing else. It's, it's all about God and commandments and being able to uh, reach that epicenter that God commanded, uh, that God promised to our to our forefathers.